every good home cook should have an amazing pie recipe in their repertoire. Mine is my apple almond pie. I love it so much, it's a family recipe and we make it over and over again. But pie can be intimidating. From the crust to the filling, you never know if you're really getting it right. But I have got a trick that's gonna guarantee flaky crust and perfectly cooked filling every single time. It all comes down to temperature. Let's get started with our pie crust. First, I am taking some flour, all-purpose flour. I like to pop this into the refrigerator to make sure it's really, really cold before adding. And I love using a food processor to make my pie dough. From there, I'll add a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now, let's talk about the important ingredients. We gotta talk about the butter. We all know that cold butter is important when it comes to flaky pie crust, but did you know that there's an exact temperature range you should be aware of? We want this to be somewhere between 37 and 40 degrees for the ultimate flaky crust. Let's check this out here. 39, that's perfect. Too warm or too cold can really affect those results. I'm happy with this. Now I like breaking my butter down just a little bit before I add it to the food processor. Some large chunks usually works well. I just break them up with my fingers and toss them in. Using a food processor really does help ensure that flakiness and it makes your life a little easier. I've always been a buttered pie crust fan. I know you can get that flakiness from lard or shortening, but I like butter for the flavor and the flakiness. The other key component to flaky crust is ice water. Now, just because ice in your water doesn't mean that it's at that perfect 32 degree temp. So I like to measure my water as well. It's important to stir it around in here to make sure you're right at 32 degrees. That's perfect. I'm gonna need about eight to 10 tablespoons of my cold ice water here. I'll start with maybe three tablespoons. Add three more. By adding slowly, you just make sure that moisture is evenly distributed. The last thing we wanna do is overmix our dough because it can make it tough. Once I've added about eight tablespoons, I like to get in there and touch it with my hands. That's just what I like to see, that it's holding some shape, but I think I want maybe one or two tablespoons more of water. Perfect, that's just how I like it. I'm gonna flip this out onto a floured cutting board and separate it into two discs, one for my bottom crust and one for my top crust. Then we'll let them chill in the refrigerator. Take a little bench flour, flour a cutting board or a work surface. Now I'll turn my dough out onto my work surface. It's okay if it's crumbly as it comes out because as I pull it together, you'll see how easily it comes together. Once your dough has come together, simply divide it in half. Take some plastic wrap, and we're gonna create a disc for each. I like to wrap the dough and then form the disc loosely by pressing down. This will make it easier to roll out. All right, we've got my top crust and my bottom crust. That's it. They need to chill completely in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, but honestly, the longer the better. I actually prefer to do it overnight. While the dough chills in the refrigerator, let's get after this filling. Now, I like using a combination of apples. Today, I'm using Gala and Macintosh, but any baking apple will do. I like to peel them, and then I like doing a smaller dice. To me, that's the perfect size to bite into. In my apples, I have a tablespoon of lemon juice. This is gonna go in a skillet with two tablespoons of melted butter. Just wanna cook those apples for about five, seven minutes or so. That's gonna release some of the liquid, which is gonna help the overall texture of our pie. After about five minutes, some of that liquid will have cooked off. Now it's time to add some sugar, brown sugar, some granulated sugar, I like mixing those two together, some flour to thicken it up, 
and some spices. Now keep in mind, I'm using a nutmeg, an allspice, a cinnamon, and some salt. We'll mix this until fully combined. It smells incredible. Then we'll kill the heat and let this cool completely before we build our pie. I want to transfer them to a bowl to cool completely before we build our pie. All right, so my filling is made, my pie dough has been chilled, and now it's time to roll it out. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. You want to have a really well floured work surface. So I kind of just throw my flour on a sideways angle like this to get a nice and even without it being too clumpy. Now one thing I always like to look for is you should visibly be able to see the butter in your dough. To me, that equals flakiness and flavor. From there, I also add a little bit of flour to the top of my dough and I like to flour my rolling pin as well. Now starting from the center, I'm just gonna go ahead and work this to roll it out. Every now and then I like to flip it around just so to make sure everything stays nice and even. On the bottom crust, we're looking for about a quarter inch thickness. On the top crust, it'll be a little thinner, about an eighth of an inch. You'll notice because everything is nice and floured, nothing is sticking. That's just how you want it. So when it looks like you're close, I like to take my pie plate and flip it upside down. Just make sure I've got a solid half inch overhang. That looks pretty good. From here, I like to roll up my dough on my rolling pin ever so carefully. Stick this guy here, and that way I can just fold it right in. Using the tips of my fingers, I'll press into the bottom of the pie plate. Now. This is almond paste, sometimes called marzipan. You can find it in most grocery stores. And this is going to add a layer of really lovely, nutty almond flavor. So here's a tip for you. I'm using some parchment paper, and what I wanna do is I wanna roll this out so that it's roughly the shape of the bottom of my pie crust. That way, as you dig into that slice of apple pie, you just get a hint of that almond flavor, and it is so good. So I like to warm this up in my hands just a little bit before. Once you've got that thickness you like, about somewhere between a quarter and an eighth inch thick, then go ahead and just piece it together in there. What we're really just concerned about is a nice, even thickness throughout. It's okay if it's a little patchy in there. Once you've added the almond paste layer, go ahead and take the tongs of a fork and just dock the bottom. This will prevent your bottom crust from getting soggy. Now it's time for that cooled apple filling. Now, if that doesn't look award-winning, I don't know what does. All right, I love the shape and size of the apples. I love the consistency. I love that ooey gooeyness from the two different types of sugar and all the flavor in those spices. Now it's time to roll out our top crust. If it's properly chilled, it's gonna be a little bit tough. I like to kind of go back and forth quickly to really start to flatten it out. Once it gets a little larger, I like to go from the center and out. After I've got it how I like it, I'm gonna simply roll it up on my rolling pin once again, very carefully. Perfect. At this point, I wanna trim my overhang to about a half inch. You can use the edge of the pie plate as a guide when you trim it. It's like giving your pie a haircut. If you make a pie for the first time and it maybe doesn't look like it's bakery quality, call it a rustic pie and you'll have everyone fooled. Here's my rustic apple pie. They'll think it's the prettiest pie they ever saw. All right, once we've trimmed our crust, we're gonna do a basic crimping method where I take my knuckle and two fingers here and go around. Now that my top crust is done, I'm gonna vent the pie, just four slits in the middle there. And this is gonna allow the steam to escape so that I don't get a big bubble in between my apples and my crust. Finally, I'm gonna do a little egg wash to give it a nice glossy top, and it also makes it perfect for adding some raw sugar. The egg wash really helps give it a professional finish. And then the last thing I like to do is sprinkle some raw sugar over the top. It gives it the perfect crunch. All right, my pie is ready for the oven. I like to bake my apple pies at 400 degrees for about 45 to 50 minutes or so, but what I'm really after is that internal temperature of my filling to be about 180 degrees, so we'll check that when it comes out. 
All right, it's time to check the pie. Now remember, I'm looking for 180 degrees inside my pie. What that means is that my apples are still somewhat firm, but I've got a really firm filling that won't be too runny. 180, perfect. I know it's ready. And there you have it, my perfect apple almond pie. I love making pies all year round, but I totally get the fear and frustration of cooking something as intimidating as a pie. Now the secret is with the temperature. By taking the temperature of my water, my butter, and that internal filling, I know that I'm guaranteed a perfect pie every single time. I can't wait to dig into this one.